Okay, at this point, I don't know if in the first video we done of double cover, we talked about this. I've Instead of going right on and starting putting your glue down and rolling, I found that it's hard to control how thick this real thin down glue is and you'll have places in the raw fabric that it'll wanna drip through. Well, that's, that's ensuring that it has soaked all the way through, but then you have a drip and it gets on the other side and then it dries and it makes a little place you have to deal with later. I found that on double covering, before we start putting that glue, we can close the weave by taking a mixture of around one part Airtech glue, UA55 to approximately five to six parts reducer. It's thin enough to work pretty well. And what I'm doing is basically similar to what you have to normally do on a covering with polyfiber where you're doing a poly brush. The only thing is it's it's clear, so you have to be against the light to know where you've went. I don't normally like using these cheap brushes, but we're not really worried about loading up a good smooth brush. Actually, when you get a lot of product down is when you start having it pull up. I actually will trim these back pretty short and you will lose a few bristles in the beginning. So you want to go back and look for those bristles that might be lost. But what I do on one of these brushes is I do everything pretty fast. And even when I've done polyfiber thin, I may start out and keep it pretty close and wet down that rib side, pretty wet. And then you're looking at the light. As soon as the brush gets a little dry, back up and go again. And back here where I'm dripping, I'm going in this direction. I don't like to drip on something that I've already done because when it, all the reducer dries out, then that drip will make a little ring of glue. According to how hot it is outside, we're pretty cool in here today. I'm gonna work all the way across here, keeping it moving fast. And, and this isn't like the normal glue, so you're not really leaving a lot of ridges. It's, it's mostly thinner. But once I've did that, I get my, my glue out of the hand. And then looking at the light, I'll go the other way. The camera's not picking that up probably, but I'll go the other way with it. And then I may start, you know, it's starting to kind of dry, but I'm changing the direction of all of those little ridges. And once it dries, it's not like I'm feeling all these ridges of glue or anything, cause it's really thin down. It's just, you may have it a little thicker here and it's a little wetter. So I spread it that way and I spread it that way. And when it's dry, I've been going this way. There's no, you don't feel any, you know, ridges of glue or anything. And that closes the weave up so that when I start rolling on the glue, I like using a small roller. Our next video here will explain that. You don't have the glue trying to go in and drip through the bottom. So I'll go ahead and try to finish this across. I also wanted to point out, I did not in the very first part of the video was, I try to do these videos, just, you know, be talking as I'm doing and everything that this isn't really for a beginner. I mean, I, I, guys never cover it for could follow all these instructions and probably do this fine. But a lot of things I'm not gonna cover when we get ready to put the cover on that you should already know. But I wouldn't jump off in my first project, experimental that is, and trying to do this. Cause uh, you have to kind of know the way glue is working and the way things happen already to be doing this. And there's things that I'll probably explain here after a while that if you've been covering a while, you'll understand. Uh, I just don't recommend people to jump in over their head and, and try to do something, you know, that's, that'll mess up later or they, you know, cause this is your airplane you're going to be flying with and you want good adhesion on different things doing this double cover. It's been done for years. It's just a what, different way of doing it. I have found that in the long run, uh, the time wise is not much difference for me than doing all the tapes and trying to make all the ends of the pink and, you know, look good. A lot of people say, well, you're just adding a bunch of weight to the airplane. I'll probably do one. I'm going to do another video on weights, but I'll real quick, I'll explain on this one. Since I'm only going to here to here, I figured up the square footage, the square inches and the lightweight fabrics, 1.8 ounce per yard. I figured all of that up. I figured how many ounces of glue I used in just this section. And it ended up being roughly for both sides of the wing, roughly about two pounds, 2.1 pound of product is all extra went on here by the time I was done. But there's also 
a total of 30 ribs, that's both sides, 15 or 16 ribs of two inch tape that I'm not putting on, plus 160 inches each way of two inch tape. When you figure all that square inches up, that's, I, I've got it wrote down. It's over a half a pound of that that you were gonna put on anyhow. So when it all comes down, it's, it's less than, than two pounds added. Some people go, well, that's four pounds on both wings, that's too much. When I'm done here, and, and I'm gonna actually do a lot of fine weights on these when I start, by doing this double cover in this weave fill, I actually probably can do away with one or two passes of primer that's weave fill, you know, I'm using just to fill the weave before I put the AirTech primer on top. I'm, I can do away with having a couple of coats of that. And some of the weights that I've done just in small samples has actually surprised me that a normal cover with a piece of pinking tape on covering like 12 inches of, of area versus a double cover brought all the way up through fabric primer to the point I was satisfied with both where I would go paint. It kind of caught me off guard when I put them on a gram scale, they were just almost the same weight. And I said, well, this can't be right. I mean, I'm adding more product, but I got to thinking I probably made one or two passes less primer because I didn't have to soak it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another video at some point, put on about different weights, but it's not a lot of weight, but in the long run, it is a slicker, you know, it's kind of a neater look to it. And once you get to using it, knowing how to do it, it's, it, it's about the same amount of time. It's not anything a lot longer. All right, at this point we've brushed on the very, very thin coat and don't, don't mistake these when I say thin coat, what we're doing now of when I talk about the thin coat of putting the tapes down. You know, you, you look through the manual to putting the tapes down, you're gonna be a one part glue, two part reducer because you're just brushing, you're trying to get a good bed of glue. This point, like I said, was about a one, one part glue to six or one part to five that we brushed in because you want it thin enough that it's not leaving a lot of glue residual, you're just closing that weave. If I put some glue on there right on the top right now, it probably wouldn't go through because I've done closed the weave with, with the other glue. At this point, I think what I have mixed here is one to five, so like six ounces of glue and then brought it on up to you know 30 ounces with the reducer. So that's a good good starting point. And I'm gonna end up putting two coats on this. You could go three, I guess, or this goes back to you should already know how to cover and, and know what it takes to glue uh, fabric down. Uh, the only difference is your first reaction is where you're, you don't have much glue going down. You're awful thin, do you have enough? Well, you'll see when we start rolling this on, we're putting it on a lot thicker than you would be when you're just putting on a tape. And it'll evaporate you know, down and, and, and lay out smooth. Uh, the roller I have found, uh, the regular rollers I think we used in the other video was a, like a regular size roller. Uh, I've tested and worked with this little ones that you see, this little small one, and it seems to work real well. I'm not getting hardly any lint off of it. Uh, and I store it down in reducer or some acetone will be fine. That way you're not having to buy new ones or trying to replace the, the roller heads or anything. And it seems to work pretty well. Uh, we're gonna be putting on a coat of glue and I'll talk as I'm doing it. It's just kind of a technique you learn. I know there's a whole process that the Kimballs used when, we were doing, when they were doing the Model 12s that they were using a polyfiber product as their brush in or a clear. Uh, same situation with this glue, we're not having to put as much product and weigh near as much, but we are wanting to get enough glue down here to embed the other fabric on and get a good adhesion. Um, in a sense, this could be a little bit more critical than a tape. If a tape was to break the barrier of paint and not stuck good and blow off, or you took a pressure washer and broke the paint barrier and blew a, an inspection ring or a dolly off, that's not the end of the world. If you was to be on a faster airplane and have a whole laminate section come loose, you could vir virtually change the airfoil shape and cause an accident at this point. So like I said, this is not for the beginner. There's hundreds and hundreds of airplanes that do this process. You just need to really know what you're doing when, you, when you're starting through it. And the key is, is having enough glue to what you're doing. Don't get in your mind, oh, I'm so worried about weight because most of the, all of the thinner goes away. 
and a lot of the carriers of the glue, once it's brushed out, eventually go away. I don't know offhand what the solids number is, but the glue is just about as light as any other glue. Once it's dried out, there's not a lot left there, but you do want that initial glue there to hold the fabric together. This first part we have painted down was close the weave and there's not much glue here at all. If I took a piece of fabric and laid on here and wetted it through, it very it would it would stick but not so like I said we were six to one just to brush on. So if he gets the camera over close, I, I load my 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 roller up and like if I'm going this way, any drips I'll take as I go. I also let me get my brush. I like to have my brush handy and I'll show you why. The first few times I've done this, it, it, it kind of worries you that you've got, you know, this is a little bit thicker glue and it's going on thick. And when it starts to evaporate, I don't empty the brush out real good. I just get a good load in it. And I found that I'll start on the, the, the rib, start back here, kind of close to where you're going to go and just do a steady run. And if he gets up close, you'll see me pushing some glue. When you get going fast, stop right there. You don't want to push glue off the leading edge. I'll stop right there. Now, when I'm done, I'm going to come across the end, you know, where I'm going to overlap an inch, but I'll stop right there. Then I'll just reach back up and then come back this way. And I might offset just an inch or two. And I'm pushing a little glue here and I'll catch it before it runs off. Then I'll just lightly raise the brush up. I get my next load, come across where I'm going to go so it drips not the end of the world. And I'll roll forward and I'll catch that glue. Now I just left a little ridge here. So I'll just come back with the weight of it in my hand, not pushing any glue. And then I'll come back here with the weight of it and lay that part out. Well, if you'll notice, I'm leaving little bubbles, little foam. It's just, it, I, I've had times I do it and the weather would be a little different. It might not be as much. It worries you because if you've got a lot of hard bubbles that dry that way, you think it's gonna show through the fabric. Well, when you're putting the fabric down, you're gonna be wetting it and kind of dissolving. But I'm looking at the light and I'm seeing those dissolve and pop as we go. A lot of times they will just almost all completely pop. But keep, if it's real warm weather, keep that in mind as you go. Let's just say you do the first bay. I'm gonna move on here and do this first bay. And here's what I, I've, I haven't had the heat running very much. Let me. Hold on just a second. Let me turn this heat off because it's going to make a racket. I heard it just now kick on. Still rolling? Mm -hmm. All right. On a warm day, you'll kind of watch that once you did the first bay. And I've laid that on pretty thick. Um, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to go on to the next one. I'm going to watch it just a second. I'm going to let them evaporate. I'm gonna show you why I have my brush. If it's dry enough or warm enough outside that it is actually drying before those bubbles completely go away, like I said, I've had it kind of be a little rough texture. And when I put the double cover on, you don't see them because you're wetting through and they kind of relax right out and you don't even see it. But there is a way I always like just feeling better when I'm done. It's the same thing as when we're brushing it on. Let me get this bay finished. It's just about looking at the light there and all those bubbles are just about gone. I mean, if, if he comes over here close to the thing and you can see when I push it, watch when I push it down, all the bubbles that come out of that. That's just the nature of the way that the reducer's doing in it. And you're kind of pushing it up here and doing the same thing. There's a little bit of a stipple effect behind the, the roller, but it's laying out fine. But let's just say you're going on along and it's warm enough that it's actually drying off and you feel. Well, before it dries off, I'll get against the light with a fairly wet, or excuse me, a fairly dry brush, there's nothing in it. You know, this is just sitting here. And the dry brush, if I have bubbles, I'll get against the light on that section. And, and what I'm doing is I'm just breaking everything down into little even, if he gets close enough, I don't know if he can see them against the light, but, and then you know, I may run it this way. Well, it's starting to, I can feel it starting to evaporate on off and getting a little bit of a grip to it. You know, you, at some point you can kind of keep doing this until it actually just goes dry. Well, you're not moving any more glue then. You're just, you're just brushing on a dry wing. But as it's going to dry, you know, I may go with a 45 
we're talking about a four inch brush or so just to just keep evening out you just don't want anything to stand up and that is that's to me more than perfect right there because i'm looking at the light and i'm seeing all those lines and i'm thinking to myself this is a that's what a painted on brushed on paint would look like that's just going to be terrible but a lot of that is reducer and when it dries out it will be just 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 smooth as it can be but like i said if you run across an area that those bubbles and i've yet to exact figure out what temp you know whether it's temperature or the barometer that they'll stay a little longer i think it's most of the time when it's just a little bit warm weather i've actually got so much glue there you can see once it's evaporating there's little like little model little effects and that's why i like to just take this brush and when i brush across it i've blended it that way it's evened out that layer of glue hit it this way and like I said, it doesn't, I can just about, I can roll on and do this whole wing in 10 or 15 minutes. You know, if I'm not talking, I'm just moving forward. It doesn't, it doesn't take much time to do it. So that's usually about all I do is twice in it. It was doing fine and all the bubbles was pretty well going away. I've seen that in polytone when I do, whenever I did one and put the pink on, they're going to come back usually and do a spray on with it. Uh, before you brush this first brush on is when you want to blow everything clean, maybe get the acid wash. But I do a little quick look in the sun or in the light. See, I can see a, br a brush bristle right there. You won't ever see those lines, but that bristle, that, that thing, when you put that other cover on, there's one right there. You can see them real easy. You can peel them off once it dries. You can run your hand and see them. I usually just look for them you know, and, and get them out. You don't have that with a good 10 or $12 brush, but I just like that cheaper brush because it's a stiff bristle. We're not worried about as much holding it. It's stiff that I can do what I was just doing where a big old soft one will just lay and drag in. If these little cheap ones like this, they're just right to me to, to blend that out. All right, I'll go ahead and, and get this first coat rolled on. Okay, at this point we've got two layers of glue rolled down and you can tell it has kind of a little bit of a grippy feel. Uh, if you're in a process and if you wonder if you have enough glue, you're still gonna kind of see the weave. You can get a little piece of lightweight tape and just lay it somewhere and just wet it through with some real thin glue a little bit and let it set for about 20 minutes and just see kind of what holds you have. You actually just wet it through with a little bit of uh, just glue reducer that way you know you're not adding any more glue you're going off of what glues on here and you lay a tape down and just wet it with a little bit of acetone and then wipe it kind of dry and let it set for a half hour which all of our pull tests are to the side but you know it will peel off you can tell how much glue you have that way and if it feels you know to your liking that you have a good adhesion you're ready to go but I can tell by just the way this feels and there's just a little grip what I like to do at this point is get some regular thin glue which is one part glue and about two part to three part reducer that you'd be normally putting tapes on. Since we've got a roll on, I'm a roll on layer everywhere. I want to come back and what I want to do is just put a normal layer and you don't really have to mark it out cause, cause this situation is not like normal putting tapes and having glue come out on an open weave that you're going to prime. I mean, you just don't want to get crazy messy, but I want to lay a good layer down on the top of this reinforcement tape on each side and I'll explain later why and we'll go all the way around the perimeter and like right here I'm gonna come up there an inch inch and a half I'll go ahead and do about an inch and a half to two inch wide layer of glue where the glue edge quits you don't want a big bead of glue you want, if nothing else if you have to actually go out on the leading edge a little bit to thin it out that's good at this point, you want to be careful of dripping at this point because any drop that you put on here when it evaporates, it's going to be a little ring of, of glue there that you will see possibly later when you lay it down. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just put another coat on the tops of each rib and all around the perimeter of everything I'm doing. All right, 
we went around and trimmed all of our pieces with a little bit of extra glue on all the tops of the ribs and all around the edges. And at this point is right before we're gonna lay the lightweight fabric over. Uh, in the whole gluing process, in the very beginning, you could clean the fabric off and blow it off, or that's where you would have put the fabric wash, any, any hand prints or anything on it. But at this point, once we've had two layers of glue on, any little thing, uh, if you have a br bristle that has came out of a, a brush or something, it's time to pick it off or whatever. But with every system, whether it's polytone or polyfibers, you know, poly brush system or whatever, you're always going to have that little, you know, every little, be little bitty place of something that you feel. And I'm not sure just what it is. It's, it's a little glue that has made a little place. You can take a little glue reducer and it'll go right away. But a lot of times on this situation, when you do that, you've, on the air tech, you've reactivated the glue. So about one wipe on, it's all you can do. And now it's kind of grippy and wet. If you keep messing with it, you're, you're just going to make a mess out of it. The second layer can probably go on those little places fine. But what I found that you take an area where you feel a couple of little spots, what I do is just take some 320 or something about that grip, fold it over, and this is after it's dry and it's not, you know, any, nothing's grippy or nothing's gonna be picking up anything as far as wet glue. And you can just, you're not really sanding, all you're doing is knocking the top edges off and you just, you just do that. What you can do is you can find a spot where you say, well, I feel a little place right there. When you go that much, it is completely gone. So I like to just glide over all the edges, all the edges of this. I don't get on top of my stitches or anything. I just, all the open weave, whether I feel something or not, just go ahead and go over all of it. That takes everything off. And at that point, blow it off. You're not gonna put any kind of chemical, any kind of a degreaser, any cleaner at this point because you've got glue down. You don't want to put anything on there that's going to hinder your adhesion for your next piece. You'll just wipe off. You can take a light towel or something or just a blow, you know, an air hose or something of any little thing that you've knocked loose. So I'm going to go ahead and, and rough over this and make sure there's nothing ready on, on it sticking up and we'll be ready to put the lightweight fabric over. All right, at this point, we've rolled out our 1.8 ounce. And from here for a, a section of it, you covered wings before, you know about squaring it up and fighting with it. There's probably 15 different ways that people like doing this. I like going ahead and laying it out. If this wing was flipped, the two strut attached fittings or the top pulley here, I go ahead and cut that and let that be my central piece because just that little bit raised up makes things happen kind of crazy at another end. But the way I've laid this one out, since I'm just going to go out here to the edge, I've pulled all my fabric forward with just an inch or two hanging over here. And what I'm gonna do is just do me a light pencil mark of about where the cut's gonna be. And that can be done, you know, whether holding it marked or taking the edge of a pencil or whatever. And then I'm gonna raise it up. And like I've talked in other videos, take some thin glue and I'm just gonna lightly, I'm not gonna wet a big area because when you wet an area, you close the weave. And then when you get ready to glue it down, you close the weave. It's hard to get more glue to go down through it. But I'll just lay the, brick, the, the brush on the very edge and I'm gonna maybe just wet an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch wide where that pencil mark in. What that does is allow you to take a razor or a good pair of scissors and just hold them steady and just cut right through that. And it doesn't start fraying and all those strings coming out by putting that little wet glue in there and then letting it dry. It holds all the fibers in one place. Up on the front edge here, I'll, uh, I'll probably, I just kind of lay all this out with my hand. And the way I do it is go ahead and look through the fabric and I'll put my mark at the edge and then I'll lay a straight edge. If I'm gonna lap an inch, an inch and a half down, I'll put that mark. And then once I get that straight line mark, same way on that side, I'll put a lot of times to keep it from gluing or getting on my other fabric, I'll lay something under it, go along there, wet it just real narrow edge and then move on down that way i can cut that side because when you glue that down however much you wet at the end it's going to be hard to wet through the very end of it but if you're very close to the end when you wet it through when you wet around the end it'll soak in the end and you can just work your way right down the glue right i'm sorry right down the line 
once we get everything cut off about where it goes, sometimes when I, when I get everything laid out, I tell people, I say, you can work for five minutes getting stuff laid out. And when you think you have it perfect, go get you a Coke and drink it and take a, a little break and come back and work on it a little more. Cause it's nothing worse than having something all out of whack once you get to the end. Make sure you got it where you want when you're doing what I did here and cutting a, having a central point. One thing I have found that helps once you, when I start raising this to cut it or something, now we've got it all moved around. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a black X or a pencil X and I'll get my new fabric and I'll put an X. And I'll do this in three or four spots. That way when I come back and I've raised it up and I'm cutting it and I've moved everything and then it just feels like I haven't got back where it was you know, a lot of times you get someone on each end, you'll say, well, I'm gonna pull it tight between us and that'll be perfect. It'll just glue all the way out. I have found when you do that, it pulls it a weird way and you'll end up with this extra slack. As in the other videos I've shown, when you're gluing the edge down, this is not part of the double cover, but I mean, you're supposed to already be pretty well in depth and covered at this point. If you're coming up to a point and you've got fabric left over, I like to just hold it up with an iron lightly and take that out and then glue it on down. Uh, the other part is, is once we get all this trimmed, we go around and go ahead and wet it through. And I like to go ahead and wet it through with your normal thin mix on UA55. You know, it might be one part glue, maybe three parts thinner or something. Whatever it works pretty good to be wetting it through. You're, on the edge, if you have to, you can raise it up and wet it and lay it in it. But I go ahead and just on double cover, I wet it through because we're not gonna have the option of that raising it up and wetting it and laying it down. We're gonna have to go through the fabric. So once we start going through the open weave fabric, it'd be a little different ratio because we're wanting it to carry on through. Once we get all the outside cut, once we get all that trimmed, don't shrink anything yet. Now, I have done it before that way Take an iron and lightly go ahead and shrink. And on the top of the wing, it works good. On the bottom, uh, if this was the bottom, before we rolled this out is when we would lay all of our inspection rings where they're gonna go. Mark them, put a little extra wet glue, glue them down, put a little extra glue on the top. We would have, cause this is, you might say a big inspection ring doily or a big piece of tape, reinforcement tape. So at that point is where I would have, if it was upside down, I'd have all my inspection rings down and then putting this down. But because the bottom is a flat surface, if some airfoils actually have a very slight under camber, when you shrink all that, uh, we don't have that option of wetting it a little and making it stick. You're wetting it through and sometimes you'll get it too wet and you guys that's did a lot of it, you know how you keep messing with it. Why is it not sticking? You have to wait on it to dry just a little and then it'll stick. What I want to do before we shrink everything on the bottom side, you'll go around and wet the inside. You look at my other video on, on doing inspection rings. You'll want to push the inside of that inspection ring. You're pulling fabric to the inside. Then you want to glue to the top and then you want to glue around the outside and push it into that. And all of this, it's not real important to have this tight. It's gonna be amazing how loose this is by the time you do all the doilies or the inspection rings on the bottom, and this is like a large doily, by the time you do about 15 of them, you're pulling some fabric together. But this is more important on the bottom than it is on the top. But once I've got it glued all the way around, what I like to do is I'll look at, I'll get a rib across here and what I'll do is take my thin glue and I'll go down the top of this and I'll wet it, take my finger or just kind of wipe it in. And, and if I went on ahead and shrunk this, it would work fine with the top curve. But what's gonna happen is it's gonna shrink off the edge of this reinforcement tape. And it may, it may reach maybe out here before it's touching the rest of the wing. That's probably fine. It'll all prime over and paint and do fine, but I don't, I'm not a real stickler on trying to ever stitch, having every little bit of the white go away. I see guys on rivets want to just sit here and work around every rivet. If it's already tried to break that edge, the more you mess with it with heat, the tighter it gets, and you're not going to get it stuck down in there. So at this point, while everything's loose, I wet the top, and then I'll come back in here with a brush, and I'll do it here in a minute after I get this one tacked down. I'll come down with a brush on each side for about a half inch or something, 
Then I take my finger and you can tell when it changes that color. We're gonna attach every one of these ribs before it's stretched. It's, it's naturally your tendency to want, I wanna stretch everything and then wet it in. That will work, but sometimes you'll get that little bridging effect and once it's stretched, you're just not gonna hardly get it to. Now, air tech glue will do it, but any other situation when you wanna, if it's a hard inside curve, if you can go on the inside and wet it, let it set your second stick, it, it'll go right to it. But we're going through the fabric, so it's best just go ahead and let that part stick down. It's a lot more important on the other side because they're straight and they have a tendency to want to come up off the surface. So at this point, I'll go ahead and glue in all the edges of this and I'll, and I'll come back when I start wetting in. All right, we've got the perimeter glued down. And also, you'll when we get up to the point of stretching, you want to let this set for a couple hours, probably before you stretch it. I mean, you could probably stretch it in 15 minutes if your room is good and warm and stuff, but to keep from having to pull away at any of the edges, we've been all around the perimeter here. And like I said before, what I want to do is go in and, now I could just wet across all of this, but if you look at the side contour, it's got to go across the top and it's got to go down into the wing. So, I'm gonna get the top, you know, lay a layer of glue, and that's what that extra layer on all the ribs was for before. And then you come down the side, and you can tell when the, the fabric changes color when it's actually activating through. And what I'm using here to activate it through is not straight reducer. I'm using about a one part glue to about four parts or something like that uh, reducer. Once you get each side, uh, you have the little spots like right here that's hollow. Uh, sometimes you're just gonna have them, but you can kind of sometimes take your finger like that and kind of work it in. Cause see, when I pull this in, I'm gonna pull from that side. So sometimes you may wanna pull from both sides. And a little hollow place ain't gonna be the end of the world, but I go on every rib now and, and attach it down at the rib. That way, when I shrink it out here, it ain't gonna pull this open edge around. All right. We went in, did all the ribs, and got them kind of locked down on each side and let them dry a little bit. I usually like to let them dry a couple hours before I do this. When you're going to shrink it, I'm just going to use a small iron. I've got it set a little above 300 because the lightweight fabric stretches a lot easier than the heavy. And we already have our main fabric on the plane. All we're wanting to do is get the wrinkles out of this so that it'll lay down and adhere to the other. Once it adheres to the other, then it's, it's pretty well set. I don't want to mash down to activate the glue because our glue will activate with heat. Uh, it's not the end of the world if it does stick, but a lot of times I just like to have a good clean iron and just kind of get a feel for it and start gliding it across and working it in the edges. And sometimes you'll go along this because, see a lot of times because it's touching, a lot of the heat's transferring on down to the piece under it. And you may not get in, be getting it as hot as you think that you are because a lot of times you'll go over the wing and kind of go real slow and kind of set everything. And then after it cools, you look back across the wing and you'll see a couple little light wrinkles, you know, that after it cooled a little bit. So I don't want to over really, really shrink it too hard. And always be careful at the ends of your ribs or something. If you don't have proper bracing or something, you'll pull a rib in or anything or on the end of an aileron. I usually on the end of an aileron or something, I'll just ease my temperature up to keep from pulling a structure in and getting that little bow in it. But just basically gliding across, uh, you can look against the light and you can see the the, uh, the wrinkles in it. And I'm just going enough to kind of take the wrinkles out and it's pretty well, because of the curve of the wing, it's sucking right down and touching. Like I was saying before on the bottom, if you shrink everything across and don't attach just the ribs, you could end up actually, you could actually have places that you're stretched all the way across the top of the rib and be just a millimeter above the rib. It will stick down to it, 
but trying to get it to make that extra curve down because you're wetting it through only, you could have some trouble. If you have a section that doesn't want to, uh, if it's got a big hollow spot here and you're really trying to work it, sometimes the more you work it with an iron, the worse it can get. But I have had times that I'd have a little crease down through here that, especially on the bottom of the wing where it's flat and I've glued this and I'm not stretching yet. And once I've glued it and wet it through and it got little hollow spots, I have took an iron and get right here on the edge and just crease down the edge of that and then iron it down where I've already glued it and it just kind of helps seam it on up. So basically uh, just go on and stretch everything, let it set for a little while and cool, look for any wrinkles and then go over everything and get it stretched down. All right, to finish the video up, I, I tightened all of this up to the point of it's ready to glue down. And I've had a lot of people want to just use a straight glue thinner to activate through, and that will work, but it's just like your tapes. Everything that you put on that's just pure thinner is all going to evaporate, and all you're doing is taking it through the fabric, reactivating what glue's there, and hoping that the fabric kind of beds down in that side of the glue, and then it all evaporates away. We really need some glue coming this direction too to encapsulate it in. I, you know, just go with whatever you feel comfortable with. This is probably a one part glue, five or six part, maybe six part uh, reducer. Uh, the more glue you get mixed in, the little bit slower it is. If you really just wet this thing down with a brush, it will work, but you have a lot of uh, liquid that has to evaporate, and then you get in a situation, if you did have a place that wasn't attaching, it's really wet, and you're going over it and over it, and it's sticking and coming unstuck, sticking and coming unstuck, and then you're having to wait on it to evaporate. And it's encapsulated between two pieces of fabric now, and it won't evaporate very well, and then you end up taking an iron and trying to make it stick, and you've got glue on top of it now, and it's getting gummy. I like to just take a little piece of a, a rag, like a piece of white t-shirt or something. Uh, you can normally get you a glove or something that acetone was, it wouldn't melt, but acetone is, I mean, you don't want to drink it, but it's nothing like MEK. Don't be getting MEK or anything like that on your skin. Uh, there's, you know, the reducer's main ingredient is acetone. And for this, I'm just going to use my bare hand. I'm, I just grabbed this rag while ago. What I like to do instead of brushing it, uh, if I had a brush here, I'd just, the main thing, I like to just come on here and get a little bit, you know, always go the direction you're going with the drip, but wetting it, and I'm not just over wetting it to have a lot of problem. I'm wetting it enough that I see the change in the color. And that way, and by me wiping it almost dry, it's like getting just enough to get wet and activate, and then I'm almost rubbing it off dry. That way we don't have that wet sensation of it trying to stick and come unstuck and stick and i'll go along it even though i can look against the light and i can see some swirls of light color it's pretty thin you know mix so it's not a lot of glue standing on top but i'll come across here with wet i don't mind it dripping i'm going to spread it and it's and I, you can take a brush and do this but you have the little bitty white places that it's not stuck little tiny hollow places and you know they're they're fine, but I have seen dark colored wings that was uh, fabric glued down to plywood that every one of those little tiny white places is a place that your fabric is not glued down. And once you get primer on them and a dark color paint, and here in Arkansas, I've actually took a, a temperature gun and seen 155, 160 degrees on a dark color. And that little tiny white place that's a hollow spot will actually make not really steam but that air will expand and i've actually seen a slight bubble come up cools off a little bit goes right back down and sticks so that's where i'm always concerned whether you're doing any kind of a layer and this uh, this system right here also works well gluing down to like a solid piece of plywood I usually tell people, like on a stagger wing or something, it's actually better to just go with a 2.7 or something that's on an area of plywood. Some people try the 101 fabric and it and it's a heavier fabric and it's harder to get glue to go through like you want it to. So that's why this rubbing action, you know, where a brush would actually just come across here and then you wipe and then you get a little white. By that rubbing action, you're wetting and you're rubbing and embedding that fabric down into it. 
So you get a color change. Once all this is done, um, check everything, make sure it's clean. And I usually like to let it sit a couple hours. And I wanna, just like putting a tape on, I wanna go another, one more coat of real thin glue, say a five part glue, one or one part glue, five part reducer or something in that range. And like we did on the very first pass where we were just filling that weave, you know, I'll come in and just do a brush, you know, in two directions and two directions until it's just almost evaporated away. And then you won't really see those lines if you just keep crisscrossing them. I and that gets your second coat on. If you try to put a second coat this way, you're kind of rubbing the glue and pushing it and may, may not get the same thickness. So I like to brush on one more thin coat and and that gets you in a situation, like I said, at that point, I've actually weighed one of these wings, put the double cover on, put the glue on, let everything evaporate out. And I think we come in at just about two pounds difference. I think when I minus off what the tapes were, minus is maybe a little over a half a pound that you would have already put on with the tapes. And I think when I get done, like I said, I'm gonna probably actually can in good faith, delete one pass of fabric primer because I'm already filled. You know, the, the first pass of my fabric primer is gonna be like painting metal. I mean, it's gonna stand up and stick to this. So, you know, when I do some weights of actual primer that's already been cured and everything's evaporated and cured out, you know, I, like I said before, I think some of the weights is just so close it kind of surprise you. Even though I'm putting a little bit of weight on the whole wing here, I'm able to take a little bit off of the primer and still get the coverage I need for the U to V protection and everything else. So uh, this will be the end of the video. All they're going here is one more brush coat. And uh, then, it, then you'll be in a situation where you're always doing the little fine ironing and checking the little corners and getting everything ready for